Hello. Today I'll briefly talk about Orientalism, which probably is one of the most significant mm -hmm. concepts in post-colonial studies. And I'm not going to explain Edward Said's book here. Maybe I'll do a separate lecture on this, but on that. But uh, my purpose here is to just introduce the concept. And since you know, what is Orientalism? It's a question often posed to me by my students, as well as, you know, in the general debate about post-colonial studies, and it garners a lot of attention. So, uh, Edward Said, while explaining uh, his reasons for writing his book, the famous book, Orientalism, which came out in 1978, uh, suggests that he came up with the idea of theorizing Orientalism because while reading European texts about the Middle East, he realized that as he read fiction, literary works, travel narratives, a certain specific view of the Middle East, which is termed the Orient in the book, hence the term Orientalism, emerged no matter who was traveling there or who was writing about it. And certain tropes were constantly mobilized. So these could be of sensuous women, of the Bedouin, of people living in the desert, uh, chieftains, images emerged, especially in Dutch paintings, of these people who somehow exist, existed outside the teleological time as if their history had not changed. And Said realized that this was present over about 300 years in multiple modes of representation that came out of Europe. And that view of the Middle East persistently was offered. And that is when he decided to theorize that concept and that concept, the reason the Europeans and also Americans maybe see the Orient the way they do is because, according to Said, that that view of the Orient is produced discursively. And I've already discussed uh, this in another lectures, which you can uh, access through the links below or links uh, uh, in the description. Said was probably one of the first scholars, major scholars in the United States to really use Foucault's concept of discourse. He actually, uh, in the preface to Orientalism, he mentions two of Foucault's works there. So roughly speaking, what he meant by discourse or Orientalism being discursive was that a body of knowledge emerges about the East. It can be historical works, it can be literary works, travel writing. And that writing is so powerful and so pervasive that any European who's interested in the Middle East, interested in the Orient, cannot escape viewing it through that lens, through the lens that places the Orient in this timeless zone as these ossified cultures, patriarchal, sensuous, like probably violent. And it's that predisposition discursively produced in the European consciousness to look at the Orient this particular way is what Said calls and terms Orientalism. And in order to create such a discourse, Said asserts in one of his video um, interviews, you have to have power, right? And he starts in, in the book Orientalism uh, he uses Napoleonic invasion of Egypt as an originary moment. And the reason he does that is because that displays the power of a European conqueror. 
that he doesn't just come in with a military and a navy, but also an army of researchers, doctors, geographers, anthropologists, who have the power to record Egypt. And so it says that that act, that power to do so is what decides the production of a discourse because there is no uh, comparable reading of France by Arabs or anyone else like that. So power is crucial, power to record, power to disseminate that information. And it's that body of knowledge combined with power that ultimately then creates a discourse which forces imperceptibly Europeans to see the Orient, the Muslim world, the current Middle East in a certain way without even knowing it. And it's that lens through which they see or think about the Orient is what he calls Orientalism. And hence, as I said, that view is discursively produced because they are already in a discourse where their consciousness is already guided to these pre-established tropes. And Saeed goes on to even suggest that it is almost impossible for people living in America or elsewhere to see the Orient any other way because the discourse of Orientalism is so powerful even now. Now, a lot of uh, conservative scholars who are opposed to Said's views uh, always mention, oh, well, there is Occidentalism as well. And what they mean by it is that uh, the people from the Muslim countries use their own tropes about America and Europe and mobilize them, even the terroristic groups mobilize them. But the reason, at least on a scholarly level, Occidentalism is not possible simply is because uh, these people are misreading how a discourse is produced. To be able to perpetuate that view and disseminate it, people who have these prejudicial views about Europe and elsewhere need to have the power of knowledge to produce a powerful discourse which is accepted as truth. And that is not possible within the given current climate of power. So they can have their prejudicial views, they can even preach it to their followers, but it still doesn't become Occidentalism because it doesn't dislodge the power of the European or American power centers. And that's why people who theorize or talk about Occidentalism don't really understand Said's work well and don't really understand, uh, you know, how discourse works. Um, there are obviously criticisms of Said, um, even from post-colonial studies, Ijaz Ahmed and others. And one of the major criticisms to his work was that when you read Orientalism, the natives seem to have no agency. It seems that they are completely a product of the Western discourses and power structures. And Saeed actually explains that in, in the afterword of the book, where he basically suggests, look, my purpose here wasn't to record and recuperate and, and articulate the acts of agency and resistance. The project of the book, which he lays down in the introduction, was to explain the discourse that creates a certain pre-established view of the Orient. And that's why the focus of the book was on Europeans and what they were producing and how they were representing the East to West. But that criticism is there. And Said, of course, goes on to right culture and imperialism and other works. And if you read his works on Palestine, you already know that he wasn't naive enough to assume that there was no real Orient or there was no East and that people didn't resist it. But that's one of the criticism that most critics offer. So just by way of conclusion, Orientalism, according to Said, is the discursive framework within which the Europeans and Americans and others living in metropolitan cultures already have certain preconceived ideas about the Orient, about the Muslim world, without even knowing how those ideas were formed. 
and hence view that part of the world with that lens. And it's that lens created discursively over time through a body of work and power and knowledge is what he calls Orientalism. I hope this was helpful. Um, if you are listening to me on Patreon or watching this video, I am deeply grateful for your support. And if you like this, please do uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you have any questions, please post them in the comments and I'll try to answer those. And I will keep producing these brief videos and hope to see you next time. And until then, you know, goodbye and see you next time.